Hello, I'm back again, this time with something a little bit more common. Today we're going to be playing with Jeff Bezos' Mighty Dong Gull. That's right, we're going to be using the Amazon Fire Stick. And what we're going to do is improve it with some retro emulation. So let's get to it. What we're going to need is the Fire Stick, a Bluetooth controller, USB 2 flash drive, and an OTG cable. We'll start with the Fire Stick. We're going to unlock the developer mode. This used to be available, but since an Amazon update, it got hidden. So to get this unlocked, let's go to the settings, which is the cog icon, select My Fire TV, and then About. I like your Fire Stick name. This should be the first item listed. Press select on the Amazon remote seven times. You should then see a message appear. No need, you are already a developer. The developer option should now appear in the My Fire TV menu. In the developer options, turn on ADB debugging and also apps from unknown sources. Time to pair the controller. Whilst we're in the settings menu, move over to the Remotes and Bluetooth Devices option and select that. Move down to Game Controllers and hit Select. And then select Add New Game Controller. OK, I'm using the Xbox One controller, but you can connect a wide variety of different Bluetooth controllers, so the pairing will need to be completed as per your device type. Let's download RetroArch. From the Firestick home screen, select the app option icon. Select Get More Apps. Move across to search, now press select again to search. Highlight and select D, and then scroll down to Downloader. Click and select on this, click on Downloader, then download and install. When this completes, open the app. Click OK. Highlight the enter URL box. And we now want to search for RetroArch. Click go and wait for the page to load. When the page opens, click RetroArch.com. We'll need to scroll down to Get RetroArch. Scroll down again and we want to click on Download Stable. When this is done, we will select Install and then Install, then Open. RetroArch will open, look a little janky, but leave this to self-configure. This may take a few minutes. It's that time again for a quick and filthy config. In the RetroArch main menu, we'll need to select Online Updater. Select the core downloader, and now select the cores for the emulators we have ROMs for. As a reminder, some cores may work better than others with your ROMs. These can be changed later if you need to. It also may be worth just clicking on the Update Installed Cores option. And the config for this is now done. Before we go any further, I'll just list all of the cores that I have selected. We'll go back to the Firestick home screen and neaten the apps bar. Highlight Downloader, click the Options button on the remote, select Hide from your apps. That's better. Clutter free. OK, we're now done with the Firestick, so let's turn our attention over to the USB flash drive. Take the flash drive and slot it in there. Go to File Explorer 
and open the flash drive. It may be worth noting that new flash drives come pre-formatted. If you are using an existing one, you may want to format this first. It's recommended you use the FAT32 file format. We'll now proceed to create folders for our ROMs, and these will be listed according to their systems. So we will start with the 3DO, then the 32X, and so on. Your folder structure will only need to be for the systems that you have ROMs for. This is now my completed ROM folder listing, and I have moved the corresponding ROMs into the folders. There is one extra folder you will need, the BIOS folder. This is where the emulated system's BIOSes will need to be placed. For copyright reasons, I can't tell you where to get these. But Google is your friend with this, especially the GitHub results. We now have everything in place, so there's only one thing left to do. Let's put it all together. Starting with the Fire Stick. Plug the OTG cable into the only port the Fire Stick has. The power cable will connect at the very end of the OTG cable, and the flash drive slotted in there. We are now ready to enjoy some quality retro gaming. So let's see just how well this performs. But before we do, we best import the content. In RetroArch main menu, scroll down to the import content option and select it. Then select scan directory. Scroll down to storage, then down to USB OTG and select scan this directory. Then wait for RetroArch to do its thing. And now we can return to the RetroArch main menu. Now we'll set the BIOS folder. Drop down to settings and a long scroll down to directory then hit select and then select system slash BIOS. Click parent directory, then storage. Scroll down to USB OTG, then select the BIOS folder. And finally, select use this directory. We are all set. So let's return again to the RetroArch main menu and play some retro games. Jamaica! Oh, <laughs> 
Choose your track, Thunder Park. Choose your boat, Misbehave. The fire stick we've used in this video doesn't seem powerful enough for some of the emulators, which is a shame. But some of the newer model fire sticks are more powerful over this old fire stick I've used, so your mileage may vary on this one. It's great at emulating 8 and 16 bit consoles, and it handles the PlayStation 1 perfectly, so it's not all bad. Anyways, that's the fire stick made better with retro emulation in my opinion, and on that blue screen of death, I'll see you in the next one, and until then, take care.